barreling down the highway, wheeling right along. Hear the tires humming, humming out a song. The rumble of the diesel, the shifting of the gears. The rhythm when he's rolling is music to his ears. Cannonball, cannonball. Any kind of weather, any time of day, when the rig is ready, he'll be on his way. He'll carry any cargo, he'll go anywhere. Name the destination, and brother, he'll be there. Cannonball, cannonball. Money, Mike. Look at this. What is it? I don't know. Probably to tie something down. Ring bolts, turnbuckles. Looks strong enough to hold a battleship. Maybe that's our load, a battleship. Let's go and find out. What gives? Don't you even say good morning anymore? Not until we find out about that Rube Goldberg contraption. Good morning, Eric. Morning, Mike. Now, what do you want? The gadget and the rig, the ring bolts and iron turnbuckles. What gives? Nothing, I hope. Here's your way, Bill. Pick up at 125 front, see Mr. Jeffers. Well, on your way. You're not going to tell us, huh? Tell you what, it's a pickup at 125 Front and a run to Northern Steel Company in Kingston. What do you want me to do, lead you by the hand? Come on, Junior. <laughs> Harry, you shouldn't eat so much chocolate. Goes to your head. <laughs> Come on. Why didn't our office tell us about this? Well, Mr. Butler felt it would be better if I explained it. As it's set up, there's actually no danger. It's just a matter of... Set it down here. Final check for leaks in the box. As you know, the Geiger counter picks up radiation and gives out the clicking sound. All clear. Load it up. The substance is known as iridium-192. It's like cobalt, and it's used principally in industry to detect flaws in structural steel. Similar to an X-ray, only far more powerful. How big is it? Well, the bullet itself, we call it a bullet, is no bigger than your thumbnail. We attach it to a nylon cord and encase it in a lead box measuring 2 by 2 by 18 and weighing close to 400 pounds. You mean that's all we're carrying in that 10-ton truck? A box weighing 400 pounds? That's all, and probably the most valuable cargo you ever carried. The bullet of 192 is worth $100,000. How dangerous is this stuff? About as dangerous as most atomic material. Let's put it this way. Three hours of close exposure to the bullet would result in horribly painful death. That's why we take all these precautions, tie the box down, give it plenty of airspace. In the event that anything should happen, if the box should break loose or open, abandon the truck at once. Call the police and have them contact me. When you get to Northern Steel, Dr. Reynolds of their research department will take over. Right. Mike, let's check it, huh? 
That thing won't move a fraction of an inch. gentlemen. Goodbye. Worried, Mike. Worried? No, I just think it. As big as your thumbnail can kill you in three hours. It's a gruesome thought. I got that stuff in bombs. Stuff like it. Drop it on a million people. At least there's one nine two we're carrying. It's doing some good. What time you got? I hate to look. My watch is radioactive. Hmm? What? Sure. Luminous dial. It's 11.40. Well, we'll be at the Midway in five minutes. Lunch break? Suits me. Hitchhiker. He wouldn't want to ride if he knew what we were carrying. Say that again. I've done a bit of walking myself. How far are you going? Oh, just a mile or two up the road. But I'll be going on after that, clear through to the next town. Oh. There's an eating place just up the road. A place called the Midway. I'll be stopping off there for a wee little bite. I'll wait for you. I'm a little flappery now. Oh, you'll do nothing of the kind. I'm not one for driving alone, drinking alone, or eating alone. You're welcome to join me. Thanks. So the guy says I'll give you 50,000 for the joint. Can you imagine that? 50,000 for this hash house? And cash, too. Did you take it? Did I take it? Frankie leaned across the counter and kissed the guy. Now, down, boy. So <laughs> then what happened? Well, he opens up the suitcase and he takes out a stack of bills this high. Thousand dollar bills, and he placed them right here. You kidding? I swear it. Only one thing. What? It was Confederate money. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys in white coats came and took them away. <laughs> What's all the hilarity? Hi, John. <laughs> Freddie almost got rich. Oh, yeah? Sit down. Coffee and donuts for my friend, Freddie, and tea and donuts for me. Come along. Well, John, how you doing? Couldn't be better, Mike. I'm hauling a full load of equipment for the Colonial Mine at Millbrook. What's with you? You wouldn't believe it. We're carrying something no bigger than your thumbnail, yet it's worth a hundred grand. And a box just about as big as this, yet the thing itself you can hold in the palm of your hand. What is it, a diamond? Something much more valuable than any diamond, huh, Jerry? Right. Uh, forget the coffee and donuts for me. I'm gonna blow. You wanna talk to your friends here and uh, I can get a ride. I'd only be a minute or two. Well, if I don't get a hit, I'll meet you outside. Suit yourself. Thanks anyway. Who's your friend, Sean? A hitchhiker. Oh yeah, we passed. 
Uh, Freddy, that's about a half a cup. Okay. Believe it now. Do you still want to ride? Yeah, thanks a lot. All right, get in. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm Dr. Reynolds. Glad to meet you, Doctor. My name's Malone. This is Jerry Austin. My assistant, Mr. Bishop. How are you, sir? No trouble, I presume? No, but this is one load we're happy to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the way bill manifests. Just sign the blue copy, please. Just a minute. This seal's been broken. Broken? I see that. It was just wrapped around the handle. Say. Stand back, all of it. Nothing. It's been stolen. You better notify the police, Mr. Bishop. I can't figure out. Doesn't matter how, as much as where. Whoever rifled this case is carrying his own death certificate. Everyone near him will be irradiated, too. place it could have happened. We only made one stop. That's the uh, Midway Cafe. And you figure the hitchhiker did it. He's our best bet. Why? We acted, we ducked out of there for no good reason. Well, you've given us a good description of him. We, Gentlemen, I don't believe you realize how critical this is. Radioactive We've poison. got a full search on. We're checking cars, setting up roadblocks. Every officer's got a full description. 
What else can we do? I know, I know. What time did you leave the cafe? Uh, about 12.30. I checked my watch just a few minutes before we left. It's now 1.15. Our man has a little more than two hours to go. And then? He may already be showing signs of nausea. It's the first symptom of radioactive poisoning. After that, might be better if he were dead. might as well head back. There's nothing more you can do here. We've checked your truck thoroughly. It's clean. I hope you get your man. Yes. For his sake. Goodbye. devil. Yeah. Two hours to go. Yeah. What if some guy gave him a lift? He's just as bad off. You heard what Reynolds said. It will radiate anybody near him. Jerry. The guy, the hitchhiker. What about him? When he ducked out, he told Sean he might go along with him if he didn't get a quick lift. So what? Maybe he didn't get a quick lift. It's one shot in a thousand. Is it? We didn't see him when we came out of the midway. There wasn't much traffic. He couldn't have gotten a ride that fast. Where was he? Maybe he was in Sean's truck waiting for him to come out. Okay, suppose he is with Mulcahy. Where's Mulcahy? He only has but one truck and no office staff. So how are we gonna find him? Wait a minute. He said he had a full load for the Colonial Mines at Millbrook. Yeah. That's north on Highway 11. Step on it. Sean Mokai. In the back, catching 40. Come alone. Hey, what's up? He's a friend. Oh, sure. Hey, he came in alone. Uh, thanks. Give us two coffees, please. Guess that's that. Worth a try. Yeah. Anything else? That's all, thanks. Hey, you want me to wake Sean up? You say he should be up about now. No. No, I'll let him sleep. He wasn't feeling so hot. Well, how's that? Stomach upset. You know, it's been going around. Blue. Yeah, it's the weather for it. Hey, Mike. Hmm? First symptoms of radioactive poisoning, like Reynolds said. Nausea, stomach upset. But he said... Yeah, I know, I know. He said Mulcahy came in alone. Supposing he picked that guy up like you figured. We dropped him back there where we turned north. He'd still be... Irradiated. Call him okay. Uh, I thought you said... 
Then we changed our mind. We're right. We're going to have to rush a call through to Reynolds. Uh, there's a phone over there. Who's this to be disturbing an honest man's sleep now? Sean. That hitchhiker you picked up at the Midway, did he go with you? Yes, yes, he did. Where's he now? Now? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to call Dr. Reynolds. Sean, pay attention. You're hauling radioactive material. Long distance. That hitchhiker broke into our rig. Hello, operator. I want to put through a rush call to Dr. Reynolds. Oh. Well, you better sit down. Northern Steel Company. That's right. He was carrying enough radioactive material to kill himself and anybody near him. This is Mike Malone. See you later. I dropped him just, right. just outside. We've got a lead on that I was feeling so kind of rocky, I figured I'd better knock off for an hour. He said he wanted to keep going. The last time I seen him, he was walking north. Police are on their way. You just sit tight, Sean. You take care of him. Where are you going? Jerry! You ought to get back down on your knees and thank him. Yeah? Yeah. He just saved your life. What'd Reynolds say? John and the goon are gonna be okay. 
They got to him in time. What about the truck? What truck? What case? They're gonna decontaminate it, scrub it out. What time again? Uh, never mind. Huh? I just remembered. Your watch dial, it's radioactive. <laughs> yeah, and it's 4.30. Clickety, 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 <laughs> clickety, clickety. <laughs> Destination that's right. 